the entrance antiphon. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we prepare for our celebration, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and forgiveness. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. We implore your majesty, most humble, o, humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal Mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, this is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice, then I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you, so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts, and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you, untiringly, all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me, nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these words to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call them, they will not answer you. Say to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord its God, or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech, the word of the Lord. Response or a psalm, if today you hear his voice, Harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he, gu he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me, they tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with all of you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute, and when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, by the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he dries out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven, but he knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and a house will fall against house, and if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? 
For you say that it is by Beelzebub that I drive out demons, and if I then drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do you, your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judge. But if by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the, the armor of which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, in the first reading of Jeremiah, he, you know, he, he complained to God a lot because, you know, the people weren't paying attention, really, to what he was doing. They were hostile to what he was saying. And so he would get mad and complain. So he's probably, you know, complaining probably most of the time. People aren't listening. But here we have Jesus today. You know, doesn't have, no one's complaining. He just does. He drives out a demon right away. Jesus does it. Because nothing was going to stop him from his mission. People could complain. We complain all the time to God, I'm sure, in our prayers. We, over the little, some big things, but really over little things, complain. Then we get mad. Then we stop going to church, really. It's a little things. People didn't speak to me. Or they didn't like what I'm doing at some committee or whatever. So we storm out. And then sometimes, many times, really, I've, unfortunately, I've met people, they don't go back to church. It's really kind of silly, our, our foundation, our relationship with God. We all have a mission. And it doesn't matter. To, I'm not a believer that age is an excuse. I have a degree in gerontology. I, did, I was a social worker with old people at a medical adult daycare. And they were more, they had more energy willing to go and do things with their medical issues than the young people. But age has no excuse because I use it all the time and it's true. God called Moses and Moses was just about 100. So we have to be ready. And the image today in the gospel, we can't complain anymore, really. We are, Catholics are a bunch of complainers. That's why the church is on full. Complain about this, the priest, the people in ministry, they didn't invite me to this, they didn't appreciate this. Now, really, they didn't, again, Catholics don't read the scripture. Jesus was not appreciated. He's being hunted by the Roman authority, the Jewish authority. He calls the 12 who didn't have a clue what they were doing. And they complained. Jesus sent fire, I always like this in the scripture, when Jesus is going to feed the, the thousands, Jesus sent fire down upon them and destroyed them. They're bothering us now, really. They're the ones who are going to lead us someday to build the church. <sighs> There's hope in each and every one of us, really, because we, we can't complain. Our mission is about Jesus. We, I like the example today, that famous painting. The, you, we've probably seen it. It's in, it's in the Vatican Museums, but in Rome. The finger of God. Touching, going to, touching Adam. That's a beautiful painting. The finger of God touching all of us. Creating us into his image and likeness. With all our gifts, with all our talents to go. To build the church, to build the relationship of Christ, to bring the healing, the love, the mercy, the joy, every all new possibilities that Jesus came for. And we re people, the Roman authority, the Jewish authority, and others kept rejecting Jesus across the board. But those who didn't reject Jesus, who were considered the outcasts of the time, the woman at the well. Many relationships. First time in the scripture who Jesus reveals himself to. Again, an indication for you and I. When we don't think we've, we've fallen away from Christ for whatever reason, Jesus is there calling us once again by name. 
to continue to restore, restores, reforms us, our dignity, our self-respect, whatever it may be. That finger of God touching us once again with great love, with great dignity. That's how we have to live our life and that's how we have to see ourselves. And that's how we have to go out and help others find, refine themselves or see themselves made in that image and likeness of touch by God to restore them to new life. So we must go and we must act because we're being called by Jesus. That's our mission. And what a wonderful gift. I say it all the time because we, we see our world today. We see the hate. We see the disaster. We turn on the news, obviously, and the horrendous things in Ukraine. But even here in our cities and towns throughout the country, you know, in California, the news this morning, well, it's true anyway, they were violent anyways, but telling people, don't wear, the women, maybe men too, but don't wear any jewelry, any type of jewelry, because they're going to rob you on the streets. This is in Los Angeles, I think. Now, really, a major city, a major city like that. Now you have to constantly think of what am I wearing? Is someone going to beat me up or rob me or shoot me for whatever? A chain from Walmart. They think it's real gold. The joke's on them. Now, really. But that's, that's the world we live in today. So you and I are called to go out and to enter that world. Not into the violence but of love, of kindness, self-respect, being that finger of God to everyone that we meet, restoring the dignity of someone's life by our words, by our actions. And oftentimes, it's within the family. Saying I'm sorry to our family members is not a weakness. They have to do it first. I cannot stand when I hear that. Because Jesus came to us first. So we have no right. But that's where it begins. We can't go and serve our neighbor who maybe needs his help if we're not serving the people we live with. It doesn't work that way. But it's not to grovel, and it's not a weakness. And even though, unfortunately, we might say I'm sorry to our families or close friends or other relatives, but they might not say that back to us. They might not be kind. But people weren't kind to Jesus. So we have to, that's who we are, that's the follower. That has to be the image of our mind. Just because we do something good or apologize, it's not going to always be returned. It was not returned to Jesus and it will not be returned to us. That's hurtful and painful. That's why we must pray. Not only during the season of Lent, we have to be praying 365 days a year, inviting the Lord, listening and pondering, what do you want me to do today? Lord, you gave me this day. How can I be that touch of your love, of kindness, of mercy, of forgiveness to the people that I meet today? We can't worry about tomorrow because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. We're not promised tomorrow. We're promised today. So here we are, once again, coming into the presence of Christ during this liturgy, his word, the Eucharist we receive, amen, I believe in you, Jesus. That's what it means when we say amen. And he's taking us up on it. But what a wonderful gift. We must think of ourselves this way today and probably every day, to be that touch, to be that finger by our words, by our actions, by our prayers, to reform, to change someone's else, someone else. Allowing the Lord to work through, our, through us to restore the dignity, self-respect, and love and healing presence of Christ to another. We need to celebrate that. We need to thank God he has called us by name, each and every one of us. That's why we cannot take our relationship with Christ lightly. This is not a filling station coming to daily mass or on the weekends or only during the season of Lent or Advent. We have been called in a wonderful personal relationship. The finger of God has touched each and every one of our lives. So we must go out to do our best. Some days will be better than others, I realize that. But we must go and do our best to touch the life of someone else. But that life we touched as well, that person is made in the image and likeness of Christ. We are touching Christ himself. God bless you.
And through our prayers, we do bring the love and mercy of Christ to many. We present our needs to the Lord. That the church may continue to be graced with the shepherds after Christ's own heart, who lead with love and care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may be united by Jesus, the one bread come down from heaven to save us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who experience rejection or failure may find hope and strength in the gospel message, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community of faith may be guided by the Holy Spirit as we work to build up the kingdom of God on earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be welcomed into the peace and happiness of everlasting life in heaven, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This morning's Mass is offered up for Reverend Monsignor John J. Smith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for peace and for the people of Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord and drawing our prayers through Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving God, we thank you for hearing all our prayers. Pray that you grant and meet our needs. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. For through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given us and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. And Lord, wash me with these and cleanse me from all my sins. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not let them cling to false joys, for you promised them the rewards of your truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for all of you. (laughs) 
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. In confidence and in love, let us together recite the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. Thank you. Please offer each other some sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon, you have laid down your precepts to be carefully kept. May my ways be firm in keeping your statutes.
and let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in this manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. We call on your loving kindness and trust in your mercy, O Lord, that since we have from you all that we are, through your grace we may seek what is right and have strength to do the good we desire through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks. Have a good wet day. Thank you.